Welcome to the second lesson of Learning MATLAB. And um, I'm going to start this lesson with a, a little house uh, cleaning stuff related to the MATLAB environment that, um, uh, that I didn't cover last time. Um, th there's a few, there's a handful of commands that are needed. So if you look over here, we have, a, we, we look at, this is basically what was from the last time is that we had the sign of pi that's stored in ants. I made T, I made X, the X variable, I had Y. So you can see over here in the workspace, that there's all sorts of um, stuff in there. If I want to get rid of all that, and the other thing to note here is that you got command history. So you can see all the stuff that I've done here. I just did all this stuff uh, this morning here on uh, 1025. So, so that's, these are these are little um, windows that you can sort of probe into what's going on um, in your environment here. So one thing you can do is you can, um, uh, the other thing, if you remember last time, I was I kept have to, having to go by back and switch the figure and just move the the figure would be always behind, and so there's a couple of tricks I wanted to show. So um, first thing to do is how to get rid of all the variables in there. You can see that when it's a big array, that it's it doesn't give you all the values; it gives you the size of it. So x and y, x a t and y are 17 by ones, and z this thing is 17 by two. So you can see that, and they're all stored as doubles. So if you, but if you want to clear the workspace and start from scratch again, you just type out clear and then the whole workspace goes away. And now if I try to do what X is, X is undefined. So it'll say, well, I don't know what that is, right? So no variables are done. If you want to clear, if you want to clear this environment, you can go CLC and that clears the screen. So clear and clear and CLC are two commands. And the last command is close. So if you watch the figure in the background, it closes and the, the figure goes away. So now if I want to do it again, I can say t equals 0 by pi over 8. And by the way, I want to I want to do it all in one step here. So I go in parentheses, colon 2 times pi, and then I do prime. And so now it's a 17 by 1 double. Another thing about MATLAB is that I want to say y equals sign of t. If I don't want to see it print out, print out to the screen, I just put semicolon and it suppresses the answer. There's still a y there. You can see it over here. But um, but now if you put a semicolon after, it just doesn't spit it out to this, to this environment screen here. And then you can say z equals sine of t cosine of t. So it didn't print it out either, and, and I guess z is a double. And then if I want to plot ty, I can plot ty, and then I go back here. N now the figure is behind, so if before I make a second figure, I can just go close and then plot z, and it comes and it's on the front, so you can see it again. So closing a figure before you um, before you replot something out is is a little more convenient. That's just a little side thing. So that's a that's a couple of little um, uh, commands: clear, CLC, and close. Those are those are some commands to know in MATLAB. Speaking of which, clear, CLC, and and also uh, the up arrow works. So I'm just going to get T again, and I'm going to put a semicolon after it. So I don't. So there it is, 17 by one, and I can say um, Y equals sine of t and z equals cosine of t. <clears throat> now I want to I want to manually calculate the tangent. So I go t and g tan t a n is actually the function t. So I'm going to call a variable t n g equals sine equals y divided by z. So it's vectorized. So this would be the first element of we we think it would be the first element of y divided by the first element of z and so on. And this would calculate the tangent. Uh-oh. It's 17 by 17. It didn't work. So if I want to see what the value of tan tangent is, I just go there and it's like, well, it's a lot of zeros. I mean, just, the first column looks okay. Yeah, I don't know what that is. So the, the answer, the answer to what just happened was that MATLAB, the MAT stands for matrix. So why a, y slash z is a matrix 
operation. It's the matrix division of a, one, a 17 by 1 divided by a 17 by 1. That gives you a 17 by 7. If you wanted to say T and G equals Y prime divided by Z prime, that just gives you a single number. So you can see that the division sign is loaded. It's the division, the division symbol is overloaded for just scalars, right? It works, right? So it works as a scalar, but for, for vectors and matrices, uh, slash means matrix division, a form of matrix division. So it's, it's not Y1 divided by Z1 and Y2 divided by Z2 and so on. That has a different, that's a different variable. So if I go clear tinge, I could just clear one variable. So tinge is gone. I can say clear X and then X goes away. So now I'm just back to T, Y, and Z. So if I say T and G is equal to Y dot divided by Z, then tang is a 17 by one. So if I want to plot that plot T tang, uh, it doesn't look like it worked. Oh, wait a minute. If you look at the Y axis here, it's 18 times to the 15th and minus two times 10 to the 15th. So this is, these are just huge. These are values close to infinity and they're dominating this graph. So to change this, the scale on a graph, you can do it man, you can do it manually with pointing and clicking here, but it's better to learn this command axis. The X min zero to seven, X max is seven. So you, you want the X axis to go zero to seven and I want the Y axis to go from minus two to two. Let me go back and look. Yeah, that looks like a tangent, right? It goes up, it comes, you know, normally this is not, this doesn't exist in a real tangent, but it's a numerical method. So, so you're going to get this artifact of going from plus infinity to minus infinity. You're going to see it from a very large number to a very, very large positive number to a very large negative number. But this shape looks like the tangent, so it does work. And in fact, if you say plot, if you go close, and you say plot, T and then use the, the MATLAB function tan of T, you get the same plot. And if you do the axis of it, I'm up arrowing to get that, you get the same answer. So dot times and dot divide are row by row multiplication and row by row division. So dot times is row by row multiplication and dot divide is row by row division. That's a difference that you have to, that's one big difference between MATLAB and other programming languages for vectors. That's how you do vectorized uh, operations instead of a for loop in MATLAB. Good. Okay, so that's the end of lesson two. Next time, matrix math.